Hi, everybody. We're here today with Jenna and her mommy <laughs> for Fun on Weekdays podcast. That was good. Yeah. Were you were you practicing that in your head? No, no, not at all. Not. That was good. It's very impromptu. Well, Daddy was a little <laughs> nervous too when he first started it. He was all red and his mm -hmm. heart was racing and he was talking real quick. Well, I might start fidgeting with my hands a little bit. So that's why I have a blanket because I can put them underneath the blanket. Nobody will see. <laughs> Well, you guys, today's episode is with my mom. My mom is in town from Ohio. Mm -hmm. How do you like Texas? I love Texas, actually. Really? Much different than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever move here? No. Oh. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's too hot in the summertime, but this time of year is perfect weather, and we have just beautiful summers in Cleveland, so I don't think we'd ever want to leave those summers, but it is a nice place to visit, so maybe, you know. It'll be our winter home. Maybe when you retire. When we retire. Yeah. You and Daddy have lived in Painesville your whole lives. You met in high school? We did. We met in seventh grade in homeroom, and we were just friends mm -hmm. all through middle school and high school. He actually dated my best friend our <laughs> senior year. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be talking about that, but it's okay. Um, I mean, you guys have been married for 30 plus years, yeah. so you're allowed yep. to say it. It'll be 33 years in May. Um but yeah, no, we we just became really, really good friends, and we had a big circle of friends that we hung out with, and when we went off to college, um, you know, things kind of just took a turn with his relationship with my best friend, and they broke up, and... You saw your opportunity. I did, and you I said, did. I'm going to get right in there. And my <laughs> mom and dad basically <laughs> said, if those two ever break up, then you are going after him, because he is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might not have said that, but yeah, no, they. my mom and dad both actually made comments, so I did it. You already had the stamp of approval I beforehand. Did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they loved him, so... And my mom also went to Kent State, mm -hmm. so we have a long lineage of family that went there, I and he went to Akron. Actually... My dad and my brother and my sister all went to Kent, mm. and <laughs> um, I was going to go to Miami University, but couldn't get in because my, my scores were way too low. I'm not a really good test taker, but um, it all worked out in the end. Kent was closer to home. I'm a ver very much a homebody and still am. <laughs> um, things haven't really changed too much, but I didn't actually want to go to college. My dad made me. He said, you have to go to college for one year, and if you hate it, you can come home. But you have to experience, like, independence, and we want you to go and sort of just be your own person. Mm -hmm. So I did it, and I liked it. I made a ton of friends who, you know, I don't really keep in touch with a lot of my college friends still, but um, I feel like I could call them up at any moment, and we you know, could plan get-togethers. Our, our lives just took different directions, which is okay because that happens all the time. But um, college was a good experience, and I, I highly encourage everybody to try it, even to, if it's just for a year. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I made it through four years, and... Um, and you went to school for... Went to school for interior design because... Isn't that ironic that you raised me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, by the way, you have done a phenomenal job here. You really have. I mean, it's Thanks. like, it's very much your style. Like, it's got a touch of class, but it also has, like, a fun side to it, too. Like, your vibrant colors, kind of like your personality. So, yeah, it's really come together. It looks great. Yeah, so I went to Kent for interior design because I wanted to do something different than all of my friends who, at the time, were going into education. Everybody was, like, wanting to be a teacher, and I always really wanted to be a teacher. I used to play with my stuffed animals. They were my students. And <laughs> I had the chalkboard in my room. And I had the little grading book, like everything when I was a kid. And I just, I don't know, I just wanted to do something different. And I grew up on Sundays after church. My parents would go to open houses. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. So... I thought it was really cool, like, just going in and seeing, like, the different houses and the designs and the decorating, and so I decided I was going to go into interior design, which I loved. I loved it, um, and I had an awesome job, like, right out of college, and um, a boss who was phenomenal. Like, she basically took me under her, under her wing, and I was, like, a child to her. Like, I was one of her kids. And she was very, very good to me. Is this um, the, at the Morgan House? At the Bailey House. Oh, the ba yeah, I worked <laughs> at the Bailey House in Chardon. And it was a new, uh, very high-end design 
studio at the time, and I was like the second person hired there. And I worked there for two full years, and I got pregnant with Sydney. When you were how old? I was like... You were 25. Know, 25. And you got married when you were? 23. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're babies. Uh. Um, and so I, it was a great job, but I always knew that I wanted to be a mom, first and foremost, and be the one to raise my kids. So once I had Sydney, my mom said, you know, I'll watch her a couple days a week if you want to go back to work. So I did that, and I just, I really just worked on Fridays and Saturdays. And that's kind of how Daddy Daughter Day came about because when I was working on Saturdays, Daddy had you girls. So I worked for her after I had Sydney, and then I went back part-time until I had Aaron. And then I just decided I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom and raise you girls. And that was, you know, a decision that your dad and I both made because that was what was important to us. And we, you know, we struggled financially. We didn't get to do a lot of things. We went on vacations with grandma and papa because they were cheap and <laughs> they paid our way for a lot of things but um to do it all over again absolutely and 100 percent. and you know we wouldn't be where we are today I don't think if we would have made those sacrifices but um yeah so once you girls were all in school I decided that I wanted to go back to school to pursue my teaching degree and um so I did that and I got my degree in like, I don't know, I think it was like two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time it kind of stunk because a lot of the districts were, but you were subbing before that. I, well, I did. Yeah. I did start subbing. I think Jenna was in kindergarten. No, Jenna was in, I was in second grade. I remember being in Jenna. You are Jenna. (laughs) (laughs) I'm talking, I'm talking about you as if you're not here. Um, (laughs) Jenna, you were, I think in kindergarten and Aaron was in, no, no, you were in second grade and Aaron was in fifth grade the mm-hmm. first year I started subbing. And I think I subbed in our district for like nine years mm-hmm. and I didn't realize that all those years I subbed, I was actually accumulating STRS um, pension funds. And so those nine years sort of accumulated to like three and a half years towards my retirement. So I was 45 when I be- went back to school to become a teacher and, um, at that point, too, I was already. You, you, I was already in high school. Yes, I think you I were was middle in high school. I think you were middle school. Yeah, I remember when you got your first classroom that was actually your classroom at Madison Avenue, yeah. which is where we all went to elementary school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Small yeah, town, and that was awesome because I was like really comfortable there with all the teachers, and um, I I started off in a long time long term position position job there because oh maternity leave right yeah there was a teacher on maternity leave and at the time I was still in school getting my certification but um I only had a couple classes to go and so they hired me for like a half a year I think it was started in January and I finished out the year for the teacher and she knew she wasn't coming back the following year so I actually did a year and a half long-term job for her in the meantime I did finish my certification and then two weeks before school started that following year she decided she wasn't going to come back she had twins and she had a couple other little ones at home and so it it was actually ended up perfect because I just kind of slid right into her into Mm -hmm. that position so I was a fourth grade teacher to start with and um times have definitely changed since then but I um I did I started at Madison Avenue where you girls grew up and um it was like just a perfect start for me I think I was actually 46 well I said I wanted to have my first job as a teacher when I turned 45 so I think that was probably the first year because Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 56 now, and I'm pretty sure this is my 12th year. I never know how old you guys are. <laughs> Every single year during your birthday, I'm like, I think they're like 48. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, it's funny because you ask the kids at school, they always want to know how old you are, and they're so sweet. They're like, um, you're like 35. <laughs> I'm like, no, guys. Remember in my slideshow when I introduced myself, I have a 30-year-old daughter. That's literally you impossible. You would have been five years old. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's impossible, but they're so sweet. They always think you're so much younger than they actually are. But, um, yeah, so I think it was 45 or 46 when I actually started. So. Mm-hmm. So but you had, like, a whole career before that because your career was being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. Yep. I don't really – I mean, it obviously is a job, but it's not a – 
it's not a like monetarily paying job. It's just, you know, mm-hmm. it's what well, did you feel really like when best. you were a stay at home mom and you told people, do you think at that time it was more common? So people respected it more versus like now it's really common that women go and have their own careers and you pay for mm-hmm. a nanny or you, you have somebody watch your kids. And then yeah. now if you say you're a stay at home mom, people are like, Oh, so yeah. you don't have a job. Yeah. Um, definitely during my time, I feel like there was maybe like a little bit of a transition where people mo- or women were starting to say, I want my, car- I want a career. And I don't think that people ever looked down on me for being a stay at home mom. I actually think some of my friends were actually envious that I, that I had made that decision to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's, it's really just a very personal decision as it still is today. I would hope that women would, weren't, you know, looked down upon if they chose to raise a family over having a career and vice versa. You know, obviously that was my decision and that was not, I mean, it was a decision that your dad and I made together. We always knew that that was what it was going to be for us. And like I said, we made a lot of sacrifices in order for that to happen, but it really is the most rewarding job that I think I'll ever have. So you did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but you also had other side jobs too. I did. Yep. My, <laughs> mo- my mom was a cleaner. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just to, you know, kind of have some little extra spending money for you girls to do dance classes. And <laughs> I literally, <laughs> I did dance. I think, how long did I do dance? Like two oh, years. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I don't even know if that got up on stage for the performance and would not move. Like I didn't you get out for the recital refused to do anything during the recital. I think you were like three years old. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, I worked. um, I cleaned houses for a good friend of ours. She was a teacher. And um, so I cleaned houses for her. And then I loved I, going there. Yeah, you did. She had that covered porch and she had the hammock in the back. Mm-hmm. And then she had that one playroom. I could literally draw a map of her house mm-hmm. that I still remember the layout so well. Yeah. It was almost kind of the similar layout to grandma and papa's house where yeah. they used to live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was a teacher or her and her husband actually were both teachers. They were, I think ba- they were retired when I started cleaning house for them. So they were like in the stage of like traveling a lot. And, um, it just was, she was looking for somebody and I'm like, I'll do it. You know, (laughs) I I mean, I have no experience. I did have experience. Actually, my mother taught me very well about cleaning and being organized. Um, so yeah, (laughs) so I did it. Honestly, I just did it for some extra spending money. And then I worked at the YMCA Mm -hmm. on, I don't know, I started off doing birthday parties there on the weekends and it was a lot of fun, mm-hmm. but mm, after a while, I was like, no, I'm kind of done with this. And so they put me at the front desk, just taking everybody's cards, mm-hmm. you know, when they came in, like scanning them in. So I did that for a couple of years, basically because it gave us a free membership mm-hmm. for the Y. So again, that was just, you know, we were able to do things at the Y and it didn't cost us anything. So, mm-hmm. and then once you were a teacher, then me and Aaron were cheerleaders Mm -hmm. and my mom started coaching (laughs) cheerleading (laughs) I kind of fell into that job because Aaron's coach like quit mid-year oh my god and they didn't have oh gosh she was in eighth grade I think wait you were Aaron's eighth grade coach wasn't I yeah are you sure I'm pretty sure I started off as her coach I think it might have been my coach well I was but I think I started, started with her maybe yeah because I'm pretty sure their coach quit mid-year and they needed a coach and nobody Mm -hmm. would do it and I was subbing for the schools at the time so you know I already had the background check and everything Mm -hmm. so I had to just go get like a I don't know activities permit or something (laughs) I can't even remember what it was but yeah so I basically said well I I mean you really just need somebody there advising them right I could probably do that (laughs) so I stepped in and I didn't think that it was going to turn into anything after that but then I think I just ended up being your coach Mm -hmm. for like a year maybe and then you stayed in the eighth grade position because then I went on to be freshman and then you were still the eighth grade right oh yeah for like a and Aaron and I would make up dances for for them (laughs) (laughs) we have one oh my god I still remember it (laughs) we have one video that is like I mean I wouldn't say it's viral but it's like pretty popular on YouTube and it's a 2011 cheerleading dance that there's like, there's two variations <laughs> of the video. The first variation that went, that did really well on YouTube was my eighth grade team in the mm-hmm. gym 
doing the dance as like a practice. We watched it back just to see our form and everything. We put right. it on YouTube so all the girls could watch it. And then the other one is a tutorial that me and Aaron made that's just us two doing the two ripples in our basement. And that one did okay too. But Aaron, well, I have to give Aaron credit. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Aaron and I made this mix, but it was really her, it was really her. We made this mix on Audacity and we downloaded it onto your desktop computer right. in yep. the bonus room. And I mean, she slaved at that <laughs> cheerleading dance mix because mm -hmm. all the other ones you had to buy and they were like $500. We're not doing that. Right. We couldn't even get new uniforms. <laughs> they wouldn't give us any budget. <laughs> so we made our own cheerleading dance mix. And then they continued to do that dance for probably 10 years with the same exact music mix. Mm -hmm. Like, cause then Mrs. Keller time. and Caitlin yeah. Keller became the coach and then Caitlin was on my team. We were co-captains and then she taught the eighth grade. Is it? Yep. So it's been going on in Riverside for years, around for a long time. Yeah. this one dance. And I still remember yeah. it like by heart. I could do it. Yeah. I, I literally had no business being a cheerleading coach. <laughs> I am the, I am not coordinated in that way whatsoever, but I, but we am, looked good. You, you were really did good at good. calling people out. I know. And I, I think I'm just such a very detail oriented person that I could see like when your formation, when you didn't have like the correct ho-hos, mm -hmm. you know, and your arms weren't nice and stiff. Like I can see those things, but for me to actually do it and show you girls. No, I, I couldn't do that. So. Well, we would sit in the basement before our <laughs> tryouts and we would do things over and over and over again. And she would critique us mm -hmm. and yeah. say, no, your, your toes aren't pointed or <laughs> it's not up next to your head close enough, whatever. But so then you did that. And then you did a bunch of other things. You were the original Susie homemaker. I think I really was. <laughs> well, no, I think, I think grandma Oh, was yeah, really grandma. the original Susie Homemaker. And then, you know. So yeah. Susie Homemaker is a joke <laughs> in our family. And we just like, so she, my mom said it one day and she goes, oh, you're such a Susie Homemaker. And me and Aaron looked at each other like, what are you talking about? Or you said it about Sydney or someone. None of us I knew think what I that meant. I think I said it about Sydney because she was, I, didn't she bake some cookies or decorate some cookies or something? I think around Thanksgiving she, time. Yeah, she posted something and I think I commented and you guys were like, what is the Susie Homemaker? So it's just a, a woman that is crafty and she's a good host. She's a homemaker. Home, not a homebody person, but just like likes to host and like do really cutesy things. Cre creative to make. crafts and mm -hmm. stuff. So now anytime either one of <laughs> us, well, any of us do like we bake something or we do a little cute date night or Aaron does all those cute notes and stuff with Zach. We'll always be like, oh, you're such a Susie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, actually when I got here, um, on Thursday and we like, you know, it was late. And then the next morning, everything was so nice. And Jenna made us this really beautiful breakfast. It was, I mean, it everybody was keeps talking about this breakfast. It was, it was literally <laughs> these pancakes that you mash up one banana and then you put in a third cup of oats and then you just put in um, some egg whites, like two egg whites, you crack an egg and then some vanilla extract and cinnamon, you whip it up and it's just an oatmeal pancake. And then I made but eggs. It had like, it had like yogurt on okay. top with cut <laughs> fresh strawberries. And then the eggs weren't, they just weren't scrambled eggs. They had peppers and onions and cottage cheese in them and yeah. turkey bacon. And she had these plates all set up and it just looked really pretty and I said oh Jenna see you're a Susie too you're a Susie <laughs> homemaker also so yeah but I was Kinda offended in the be family because nobody said that I was a Susie I'm like what do you mean I am such a Susie you're like no no you're not I'm like well I'll show you that I am mm -hmm. when, when you come to Texas I'll show you I'm a Susie you did and you did you're a Susie <laughs> mm -hmm. I forget where we were at we were talking about whatever else oh like, being a cheerleading coach yeah other jobs Susie. that I had I mean um no, I mean, I volunteered a lot at school when you kids were, you know, in school. I was the PTO president for a couple of weeks. Yeah, oh I my just got myself busy doing stuff mm -hmm. with you girls before I went back to school. So. Okay, so are we all just not sleeping at night or <laughs> what is going on? Because a couple weeks ago, I posted on my Instagram story. I shared about how I've been having a really hard time sleeping at night, tossing and turning. I get heat flashes. I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Once I'm up, I'm up. There is no going back to sleep. So sometimes I sleep for like four hours a night. 
I cannot even tell you how many people replied to my story saying that they're going through the exact same thing. So if you resonate, I have found the solution to a better night of sleep. Number one thing, upgrade your bedding. It is so worth it to invest in quality bedding that's going to last you throughout the years. You spend a third of your life sleeping. A third of your life is spent in your bed. When I moved into my new house last summer, it was really important to me to have quality pieces in my house that I would keep throughout the years. My best recommendation for new bedding is Cozy Earth. They have a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty on all of their products. Also, please, please, please do not forget to wash your bedding. Connor and I wash our bedding every single week. It's part of our Sunday reset. So get new bedding and wash it regularly. And B, get a matching pajama set. I constantly feel stressed out. I often feel like my life is very spontaneous, a little chaotic and out of control. So when I have an opportunity to take control of my life, I like to take it. And my nighttime routine is very important to me. It's one of the few things in my life that's very consistent. I wash my face, brush my teeth, I put on my retinols, and I put on my matching pajamas. Something about matching pajamas makes you just feel like you have your life together. It's one less thing that's out of place. I love my Cozy Earth pajamas. I've shared links on Instagram a few times. You guys always love them and always ask for it. So I'll put the link in the description as well. And I have a code for you. So it's fun on weekdays for 35% off. It makes a great gift for yourself for your birthday. Treat yourself for some nice new PJs or for your mom for Mother's Day coming up. Also, if you need a gift for a bride, incredible gift. I just sent a pair of pajamas to my best friend, Sarah, who's pregnant. And she can attest that she gets a better night's sleep and they're the coziest, softest pajamas she owns. We don't pay for anything full price around here. So use fun on weekdays for 35% off. Fall festivals, mm-hmm. did everything. Built, built games. Oh my God, my mom and dad, when you were the PTO president, took over the fall festival at our elementary school. It's like a little mini carnival, and they <laughs> literally made <laughs> carnival games, plinko like, boards, mm-hmm. and we had a papa shot. Is that what we had it from? The we papa had shot? the papa shot that okay, was a Christmas gift years and years ago, and I thought, oh, that'd be a perfect game, yeah. papa shot, and we made a little spinning wheel, and we the made the macaroni, thing where you, yeah, where you drop the ball down the lane, and it goes into a little channel, and you add up the scores, and mm-hmm. I, like, I don't even know if those games still exist, like, if they're I'm still sure they around, do. but... They were really high quality. You they know, might we, be rotting, honestly. If they I'm were stuck in a shed <laughs> with water, I feel like they could be like. I don't know. The wood could I be hope rotting. not. That that was a love of labor or labor of love. Yeah, labor of love. And then you did a theme every year. So like one mm-hmm. of the themes one year was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when that movie had come out. Yeah. And they got this wind box that they put a hundred dollars. We called it. A, we barbells. called it the glass elevator. Oh right. And we went around selling little mini Hershey chocolate bars for. I think you got like four for a dollar or something and we had wrapped um <laughs> I think three of them mm-hmm. we we did three of them with a golden ticket in it and if you got a golden ticket you got a chance to go into the wind tunnel which was the glass elevator to collect as much money as you could mm-hmm. and I think we had one 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 hundred one dollar bills mm-hmm in there and that was just t- it was really cool yeah we always had a little theme and it was a lot of fun planning made just a to hay make maze it. we did a hay they had maze a, yeah. I think do you think that I get the um, event planning from you yeah for sure uh, but let me tell you it was exhausting and if you don't have a team of people to help you with stuff it, it it's a lot but um but you if you have a drive to do that kind of stuff which I did and fortunately I had daddy that helped me because he's pretty creative and you know, he helped me build the things that I wanted or get the hay delivered <laughs> that I wanted. Um, it makes it a lot easier. But um, but yeah, I, I definitely think all of you girls like get your creativity from from me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's creative I'm gonna too. Admit it. I'm going to admit it. He's the funny one. He, you know, he's the punny one. Um, he's good at writing and you're good, good at, at writing. Crafting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We come from a very crafty <laughs> DIY family. And we love a good deal. Yes. Definitely. That's why I like to get everything on sale or try and make it myself before I ever like actually buy mm-hmm. what I'm looking for. Grandma always We brings, made everything. Yeah. But grandma always brings up the um, 
fact that when we would go shopping. Oh, to limited too. Literally. She just told Jenna, me about this. She called me the other day and she was <laughs> bringing up this story. Jenna would make a beeline. Like, like Jenna was, I don't know, six, seven years old. <laughs> and we'd go shopping, you know, for beginning of the year, school clothes shopping. Mm-hmm. And Jenna literally would disappear to the sale racks. <laughs> and my mom would always just think that was this, this the cutest thing. She's like, oh, look at Jenna. She's always looking for a good deal. <laughs> I said, well, she's smart. Like she knows that you can get twice as much mm-hmm. as you can if it's on sale than if you're paying full price. Like she ha- she figured that out at a pretty, pretty <laughs> early age. So, Well, everything yeah. always goes on sale anyways. Right. So you just got to wait a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. And then we would always get those coupons in the mail too. So we would never get anything from Victoria's Secret unless we had one of those gift cards and then limited to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We love, yep. we love a good deal. You're kind of a natural at this. I'm like definitely calmed down a little bit. I, I wasn't at You're first. like loving it. You I'm can not talk really. I just don't know where to look. If I'm supposed to look at you or look at the camera or I don't know. I'm having a hard time with that. So I think I'm just sort of talking to you. <laughs> I'm just pretending that the well, when camera I, does not exist. I talk in front of kids all day long. Yeah, so that's true. That's super easy, but you put me in front of a group of adults and I I just am not. The kids when we shared like traits about ourselves, this is like a couple weeks ago during more, our morning meeting. And actually the question was are you an introvert or extrovert? And we go around and we do a little bit share and then we kind of give a reason why. And it gets to me and I said, well, I'm an introvert. And the kids are like, Mrs. Palak, no, you're not. I said, truly, you guys, I am like, it's super easy to be in front of you talking, but in front of adults, if I'm with Mr. Palak, then I feel like I'm definitely more social, but I am not a real social person (laughs) at all. I literally, I, I kind of like my own little space. I like being by myself a lot. Um, yeah, he's the social one. So Mm -hmm. he forces me to be more social, but yeah. Well, you're social with your inner circle. Yeah, for sure. And I just, I just think I'm, I've always felt that I'm a pretty shy person, which I don't know. The kids find it hard to believe, but I I don't know if you're shy, but I think all three of us are a good mixture of introverted and extroverted. Yeah. Once I get my fill, I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody else. Yeah. I yeah, like you to get just to that go in my point. room. Yeah. When I drive to school in the morning, it's no radio, no music, nothing. It's quietness. <laughs> and then when I come home, it's the same way because I'm with the kids all day and it's a lot of chattering going on. Mm-hmm. So I just prepare myself on the way there with just quietness. And then on the way home, it's just like, you know, winding down. Mm-hmm. People are like, how can you not listen to the radio in the car? I said, I do. A lot of times I'll listen to your podcast, but <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, no, I usually just, it's quiet time. Well, you've me. been listening to the podcast since I first started it. Yeah. Every episode. <laughs> haven't missed a one. What's been your, what's been your favorite and least favorite? Do you think I've gotten better? Um, yeah, for sure. I, I think, I don't know. Obviously I like the ones that you did with Erin. Um, in the very beginning, that one was pretty emotional when she talked a lot about Taylor. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked the one with daddy after he finally calmed down a little bit, but he gives such good advice. And I think there was a lot, you know, going on in that, that conversation that was just nice to hear him say like Mm -hmm. out loud. Um, I don't know. There's the one girl that talks about the habits. I liked, Oh, Shelby Sacco. Yeah, I liked her podcast. I like that podcast a lot. I don't know. There's just, there's been a lot of them that I like. I like some, I like your very original one, like the very first one where you're just introducing yourself, super bubbly, and you could tell like you were nervous. Like you Mm -hmm. can definitely feel like you've just kind of evolved and come a long way since the beginning, as has fun on weekdays. Like it's definitely changed over the past couple of years because Mm -hmm. you've matured and your life is you know, a lot different now than it was when you first started Mm -hmm. the podcast. So yeah, it's kind of just nice to see how not only you have changed, but, but the podcast Mm -hmm. has too. Well, when I first told you guys, I remember sending my text in the family group chat. I remember calling you multiple times when I was working at TikTok and just being so stressed out Mm -hmm. because I wasn't good at it. Crying. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think I made the right decision. What am I supposed to do? I'm like, (laughs) you just tell them. You mm-hmm. just go to them and you tell them, I need, I need help. I need direction. Like there's nothing wrong with admitting that. And that's mm-hmm. how you get better at stuff. So. And then I told you guys in our family group chat that I was going to quit my job. Oh God. Yeah. And initially <laughs> yours and daddy's responses were, would you say like concerned 
or apprehensive? Mm-hmm. Like, well, because we don't understand the social media world. Do you feel like you understand all? it better now, though? Um, For sure, yeah. Definitely being on TikTok has made a big, big difference because I don't even think I really was on TikTok mm-hmm. until you started working there. I, I, I knew what it was, but I have never really posted anything and the only reason I'm on it now is because then I can keep up with you (laughs) (laughs) and know what's going on in your life but um yeah no I definitely we were obviously very nervous because it's such an untraditional Mm -hmm. um occupation I guess you know it's just not something that we ever had heard about before so a little bit nervous Mm -hmm. about it but we had a trust in you know your decision and support you as best as we could. How would you say your opinion of me doing social media has changed as Fun on Weekdays has changed as I started doing events and you've come to a couple events and Mm -hmm. you've seen what I do and Mm -hmm. then you've been here too when you've seen me like working on my phone and everyone's always like, what are you doing on your phone? Like constantly. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, Jen, are you working right now? Or are you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm working. Um, how has it changed? Like how have you evolved? Yeah. Or how has or my like, idea of yeah, it changed? Yeah. Well, I think what people don't realize about what you do is that you are constantly working. Like, even when you're out in public, like, because you don't know who you're going to run into. Like, we're with you even when we were at the rodeo and a couple mm-hmm. girls came up to you and, you know, said, oh, hi, Jenna, I just want to come up and say hi. Can I get a picture or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you really, when you're out in public, because you are a public figure and you <laughs> share a lot about your life <laughs> on social media, like you, you know, you have to always be on, you know, and I think that's hard mm-hmm. when sometimes you don't want to be. Um, so, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't even know. I don't even know where I'm going with this answer, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> Well, how, your opinion has changed from the beginning. You're like a little bit apprehensive oh, yeah. and worried and concerned. Like, oh my gosh, okay, well, we'll just trust in her doing it. But now I've been doing it for over two years. Mm-hmm. And now we're sitting in my house. Right. And I'm going to, full disclosure here, and I, I don't even know if she's going to, like, maybe she'll take this out. <laughs> oh but God. full disclosure is, like, I know that you're doing well. Like, I, I can see, like, the things that you have. Not that you have any of this for show whatsoever but you work very hard for what you have and always have and your mantra about making it happen you make it happen um so you know I know that you're doing well because your bank account is attached (laughs) to my (laughs) bank account still so I can see that you're doing well but you can also see too that I do love a good deal and I don't do yes and I don't spend a lot really all I spend money on is things that a, I like need for the house. Like I need pillows for one of the guest bedrooms. So I, okay, sure. I go to home goods every day, but like, I literally need pillows. So what you are a pillow girl. I will say <laughs> there are so many pillows outside around that pool too. Um, <laughs> the pillows out there, I'm not sure about, but, um, yeah, but yeah, like other pillows, I'm a pillow girl too. I love, I love some cute toss or, you know, throw pillows here and there, but, uh, yeah, no, you usually just kind of buy what you know. Like a lot of the stuff you have, obviously, mm-hmm. you have its PR. So you have. Well, or Facebook Marketplace. Things, right. Oh, a lot of my much, furniture is I was Facebook Marketplace. Say, a lot of things in here are Facebook, except for the beautiful vanity, which I did. I did put my name on a schedule so I could use it. Did you use I it yet? Use it. Yeah, a couple times. Oh, okay. I so was going to, po- I was going to actually post something, <laughs> like a TikTok, like <laughs> how I raided the drawers. And I did steal. Uh, another full you, disclosure you st- I did steal <laughs> a, a cover girl eye sh- eyebrow uh, an pencil. eyebrow pencil yeah <laughs> I'm keeping that you could have way. daddy make you one of these vanities <laughs> at home yeah I don't even know where I'd put it you'd have no, to I'm put good. it in a room downstairs I have a maybe. little round mirror and I just I, I need a little magnifier up <laughs> close so well so my mom was here my mom's sister Leslie mm-hmm. our cousin Jamie who is your brother's daughter mm-hmm. and then my two sisters Sydney and Aaron everybody was just in town so everyone came in on well, no. Yeah. Everyone came in on Thursday, but I had the full day with Jamie and my aunt. And then you all, we all started our itinerary on Friday. So we did a bunch of things. On Thursday, I took them to go play pickleball for a little bit. And then we went to Esther Foley's, which I took you guys to yeah. so during cool. New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. Right? Was it New Year's Eve? Yeah. Love that mm-hmm. place. Like, I never laughed so hard. And I'm not yeah, that you type don't of like person. a comedy show. Not usually, but I loved that. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. very entertaining. It's like dancing, singing. Mm-hmm magic comedy 
all in one. So anybody that's coming to Austin, I always recommend doing it. And it's mm-hmm. just a fun little like kitschy thing to do. I've gone three times now taking people there and I think I've maxed out for the year. I don't think I can go back again until a couple months. But we did that and then Friday we went to Aaron came to my workout class boat. and then we went on a boat. We did Lake oh my Austin. Gosh, the boat was so fun. Um, that would definitely be daddy's retirement job <laughs> on a boat like that. Like it was a speed pontoon boat mm-hmm. and he had us up to what? 57 miles per hour yeah. on the lake. It was crazy. Um, that was a lot of fun. Love that. But we're boaters. So anything on the water we love. Mm-hmm. And then we went to the rodeo at night and that was so much fun. I didn't like, like I, I wasn't like ready rodeo. to leave. Everybody else was exhausted. And I'm like, there was a little concert afterwards. <laughs> I'm like, um, do we want to sit and listen to, because I liked the music. It was like country music mm-hmm. and it was, I thought it was really good. It was Flatland Cavalry, which I think that you would probably know one or two of their really popular songs, but the songs he was singing, I didn't know them, yeah. but the rodeo was fun. I liked that. It was we a went, new experience. Yeah. We went to the show. They did like the horse riding and the, the, you know, with the lassos and everything. And mm-hmm. then we went outside and we did a little carnival and we got tickets to go on the <laughs> Tilt-A-Whirl and the Spider, which my dad's parents grew up on Geneva on the Lake. They had a trailer out there at a campground and we would go there all the time yeah. growing up. And we had a season pass season to their little amusement park there. <laughs> so for me, Sydney and Aaron, the Tilt-A-Whirl and the Spider were the two like very nostalgic rides that we would go on non-stop mm-hmm. like non-stop yeah. and when you watch them when you watch people on the ride you're like oh, that's a it kitty looks ride lame. that's it a kitty ride yeah. we were crying tears <laughs> of like laughing so hard because we were not expecting it to be so scary and that was a really good time that was probably one of my more favorite parts of the trip and then mm-hmm. came home everyone went straight to bed and we woke up early saturday morning to then go to round top mm-hmm so you like we went to the market. Yeah, I, I, I would have liked to spend, you know, maybe another day there going to more of the flea market side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, just to kind of, I don't know, just to see like local, I guess more local. Is that more local? Yeah, people I think so. Well, so Round Top is this small town that's about an hour and 20 minutes away from Austin. And it's 21 miles of just antique shops, um, art mm-hmm. and galleries and just a ton of people from all around the world yeah (laughs) they have wine we had like a lot of margaritas drinks I think I probably had four or five of those I had coconut cowgirls the ranch waters were good well she was all excited because (laughs) she didn't really know what a ranch water was and then when she found out that it was mineral water she's like oh perfect there's no carbs in this (laughs) and I get a shot or two of tequila Mm and it with a little lime it was perfect well so my mom and dad have been on their fitness journey because they're going to um mexico Mexico. in june so they've been really good about exercising and eating really good and doing really really well with that so Mm -hmm. i think she was a little nervous coming here since we knew we were going to winery and going to dinner and all those things so when she had the ranch water (laughs) she's like oh okay i'm fine yeah i'm on (laughs) spring break so you know i'm off this week when we get (laughs) Back to Ohio, be back on, <laughs> back on. We did that Saturday. We didn't do anything at night. We just came home and yeah, we, were we went to Chewy's for dinner. Yeah. And then Sunday morning, we drove to Fredericksburg mm-hmm. and that was a full day. We've been to Fredericksburg one other time, mm-hmm. um, but we didn't do like a tour Tours. or tastings or anything like that. So we went to three places, which I'll post the itinerary if anybody is interested in yeah. what we did. And yeah, the the three places. Well, the one we had already been to, but the other two were new. I really liked the cave. I think that was mm-hmm. Slate Theory. Slate Theory. That one was really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Fredericksburg is. I w- I wish that we would have been able to stay another day just to go to the downtown yeah, shops I know. and. Um, but Erin had to fly home, so we had to get her <sighs> to Aaron. the airport, and everybody was a little bit hungover the next day, because we forgot oh to take gosh. our water boy with us. We weren't a little bit hung- <laughs> well, you might have been a little bit hungover, but I was horribly hungover. The drive home was not good. Yeah. Sydney went to Walgreens, and all they had there was like an electrolyte, which is basically Pedialyte, but... It's like 36 grams of sugar yeah, in a bottle and it's just straight sugar. I'm like, I already drank so much sugar yesterday with this wine and wine hangover is just so much worse than a ranch water or something like that. It doesn't hit the same. Mm-hmm. So yeah, then we drank a water boy when we got home, downed that 
and then played pickleball for a minute and had my friends over last night for The Bachelor, the the finale. Okay, so let's talk about that. So (sighs) we've been watching The Bachelor since I was... The very... uh, I've watched since the very first one. Yeah. It's just, um, well, Daddy and I call it our date night. We used to drink like this big, huge (laughs) bottle of, oh God, Ferrante's. It's a local winery um, in Geneva. Well, yeah, Madison and Perry somewhere out there. And we used to drink this big jug of wine years ago and, you know, super sugary, sweet. And then we would always have like a little drinking competition with Aunt Kim. Mm -hmm. Every time they said the word amazing, you had to take a drink and a journey. Um, But amazing was always the big word. But yeah, we've watched since the very, very first one. I think we've missed a couple here and there. But Mm -hmm. this I thought this was a really good season. Mm -hmm. I like Joey. He's cute. Um, seemed very down to earth and, yeah. um, his last two girls obviously were good picks and he couldn't have gone wrong with either one of them. We'll love Daisy. She's so cute, but Kelsey's cute too. So I love Kate. I think Kelsey was like the very, um, understated yeah. Yeah. girl. Yeah. Like they didn't make a big deal about her in the beginning at all. Nobody like, even thought to like pay attention to her. Yeah. It's kind of like Sean Lowe's season with, with um, Catherine. Catherine. <laughs> I love Because she d- she was never, I I mean, you never expected her to be the winner. But well, the, I feel like it's so just based on the way that they showed her on the show. Mm-hmm. They didn't make it seem like she was a front runner until the end. Yeah. But our so big thing always has been, at least, why are all these beautiful people on a show to mm-hmm. find love? Like you can't find love like in the real world. Seriously. Like it's not the same anymore. I Dating know, these days guess, is so hard. I guess. I don't know. There's but too many options. I think that's what <laughs> it is. Like, especially on my Facebook page. I mean, you read it. You read all the girls asking for advice. Yeah. And especially people, and now that I have the matchmaking page too, mm-hmm. people are like, yeah, sure, there's apps out there and everything. But like, just with social media in general, there's just constant options. It makes you feel like you can always find someone better. And then you just are never really like, I don't know, fully yeah. committed to it, especially with with being able to have access to so many people online that I think that's why it's so hard these yeah, days. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I guess I, I don't <laughs> know that. I was married when I was, I was engaged when I was 23 and, and married when I was And daddy's your first, so. like, well, he's your only, like, real boyfriend, right? No, you had I had another boyfriend. Mm, yeah, for about <laughs> three months. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you but didn't yeah, have to go through that. You got lucky. Yeah, I did get lucky. Okay, what was your favorite season of The Bachelor? Or um, Bachelorette? Favorite? Well, I really liked hannah brown season <laughs> i mean you know well she's after seeing connor on his on her season and now knowing oh connor, we liked connor during during all of that yeah we liked him mm-hmm. um what what now we, knowing him in real life what do you think now do you think that how they showed him on the show was well he's he older and more mature now obviously but yeah no i don't know he's i to have him on a show, because he's, I think Connor's just a very private person, mm-hmm. so for him to be on the show is just showed a, maybe a different side to him, but hearing a little bit of the background stories of actually what goes on, yeah, you know, during, during, because people don't know, like, it's a show, just, just remember, it's, it's just a show. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things you see, like the note that she, that Kelsey wrote to, that was all, I, obviously, that is not yeah, her. Yeah, producer planted, you know, that's for producer sure. producer planted, but... Yeah, Connor. Connor just seems like such a little boy on on <laughs> Hannah's season compared to him now. I don't know. <laughs> well, that was like five years ago. I know. He was twenty four on that show, and I always say it too. I'm like, I can't. I just cannot imagine. I mean, like, I can, but I can't. Yeah. Because I just don't know who that is. Yeah. Like, you were just right out of college. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And now he's turning thirty this year. I know, and it's so funny because I, I probably shouldn't say this, but he he just is like. I'm not, not embarrassed to talk about the Bachelor stuff, but he just doesn't really like, I don't know. Yeah, he's got other things going on. Yeah. I feel like he's kind of moved past that. Yeah, but I do too. I he do love too. It. He does love to he watch d- it I was going to say, he was all about fast forwarding last night to yeah. make sure that we were, because <laughs> we started late with the well, live. But So I haven't said this anywhere, but Connor is one of his best friends, because this episode will come out, like not, not this week, but next. And the cast has already been released on Bachelor Scoop and everything. Mm -hmm. But one of Connor's best, best friends, Spencer, who lives in Dallas, is actually on this upcoming season. So we were really excited to see if at the final rose after that show, if they would bring out a couple guys for the season. Yeah. And yeah, so we were really excited about this last finale just for that aspect. So we will have to tune in for Jen's season to watch Spencer on it. But he is such a 
he's just such a nice guy. Like so, so nice. Huge personality. I can't wait to watch him. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> so that added another yeah. aspect that made it kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it'll be fun to watch just to mm-hmm. sit because we'll know, we'll know somebody. Like, yeah, exactly. I won't know him, but I'll know <laughs> of him. So, Okay, so we were talking about teaching before. I know we're kind of jumping yeah, around. Yeah, I was going to say, are we going to ever get back to the teaching thing? Because yeah. that's what we said we were going to talk about. Well, because we wanted to <laughs> talk about how teaching changed during COVID, especially because so many girls that follow me and that are in my Facebook group post a lot about how they went into education mm-hmm. and then it ended up being just so mentally draining. And I see TikToks all the time too. I'm on like teacher TikTok yeah. where people talk about how like COVID just completely changed school and how kids learn and now how like kids are being raised by a different generation, how they think that has played an impact in like their behavior and everything. So I'm curious what your take is on how education and being a teacher, your job specifically has changed because of COVID with well, online learning and everything. I, I just think in general, education just to com- always is evolving in what, what the expectations are of teachers. So like when I started subbing in the school district and I did, you know, quite a few long-term subbing positions, we didn't even have common core standards back then. Like mm-hmm. literally we had Ohio standards and you had this little flip book and you went through and you picked like what you were going to teach and you were basically you had a basal like for reading you literally had a book you opened up the stories are in there you know there's writing prompts there's all your um all your English lessons you know grammar lessons everything was like all together in what they called a basal Mm -hmm. and obviously they did a did away with that and then common core came about and it was like a big change and people were like oh my god these standards are too hard for these kids like what are they expecting them to learn blah 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 Well, we got past that, and then, you know, it's always something. So then, obviously, the most recent thing has been with COVID, and a lot of kids, um, they, well, the class that I have this year, I believe they were in kindergarten Mm -hmm. when we went remote, like in March um, of the COVID year. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. You think it'll help when there's a completely new generation of kids I that think so were not in school or part of it during that time? Yeah, like our- I think it'll refresh. like our- our well maybe our fourth graders were kindergarten our fourth graders this year I think were kindergartners so our third graders this year would be the ones who never really experienced that you know at home learning Mm -hmm. I think it was just super challenging for the kids and for the parents as well as the teachers to have to adjust to teaching a different way you know we came back from COVID after being home for three months we came back the following year we were all masked we were behind shields there was not a lot of socialization going on and I think what happened was our expectations like we dropped our expectations Mm -hmm. because you know we were trying to be empathetic to situations that were happening at home because you know some parents lost their jobs and you don't know what kids are dealing with during that time with parents not working and then the cost of living goes up and everything's so much more expensive. And so, yeah, things definitely have changed, I think, since COVID for sure. And we're starting to get back on track, but it still goes back to just education is constantly evolving. So we're like in the process now of learning about personalized learning and we're like, oh my God, like, what does this mean? Like every kid is going to have their own personal learning plan, Mm -hmm. you know, flexible learning, their own learning path, um, student choice. Like it's a big, it's a big talk track now. And so that's just another new thing on our plate. So when I look at like your Facebook page and I see girls posting about, you know, their job, like I was in education and I just couldn't do it after a year. It is hard. It's really hard. And I just remember being told if you can make it past your first five years, as a teacher, you, you'll be fine. Five years um, is still such a long time it is, though. Like it is. a lot of people don't stay at the same company for more than two or three years now. Like mm-hmm. it's just kind of unheard of. I mean, daddy's been at ADP for years and years and years, mm-hmm. but I think especially with our younger generation, like you're told to hop around cause that's how you get, that's how you like advance. That's mm-hmm. how you get paid more and promoted. The, the hard thing about being a teacher and hopping around though, is like, say you, um, or a teacher in Ohio, and then you move to Texas, a lot of your years experience don't transfer. So you have to be like, 
we, we have a very good friend, Dave Bull. Mm -hmm. He is a, a superintendent, and if he were to move out of the state, he would lose a lot of his his years. Um, so he's pretty much forced to kind of staying where he is now because he's so much closer to retirement. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you you we kind of are stuck. Now I wouldn't want to say stuck. That's not a good word to use. But you have to be very mindful about losing those years mm -hmm. that don't account towards your you know um, retirement years. So that's one thing, but go kind of going back to like the empathy, you know, for the kids and the families before COVID, um, the, the minds, I think the biggest change I think since then is that the discipline has really lacked. Mm -hmm. Um, and we talk about this all the time, like people are afraid to discipline kids anymore. And I mean, discipline Teachers, doesn't mean you have to spank no, on the butt. Yeah, with a not like that. <laughs> it, I think it's the expectation and having a consequence for making a bad choice at mm -hmm. school. You know, you're poking somebody with your pencil on purpose and, you know, piece of lead. Well, that's a choice that you made. And there's like no discipline for that. Um, and, and, and while that seems very trivial, it still contributes to a classroom environment that mm -hmm. you know you're working so hard to have a safe environment for these kids so like when I when I read these posts about teachers saying I can't do it or I'm watching TikTok videos where I'm like I'm been a teacher for a year and it's just mentally draining and it it truly is because your job you know you're not just working from eight to four in the yeah. afternoon you're bringing papers home and you're grading and you're doing lesson plans and you're trying to create the most engaging well and you're also lessons. being somewhat of like a parental figure for you that are majority you are. of that you're day. a nurse you're a referee you're like a lot you wear a lot of different hats during the day and um so I think the biggest thing people say is like teachers just don't get paid enough for what they do mm -hmm. and honestly if you're going to go in education you're not doing it for the money you're doing it because you love kids and you want to impact them and you want to make a change in their lives. And so I think my biggest thing with people who go into education now is um, you have to develop a really good classroom management plan. Mm -hmm. And once you have that, I think becoming or being a teacher is a lot easier. Like you really have to work hard at building relationships with the kids because once they trust you and they know that you truly care about them, they will behave for you. Mm -hmm. They will do exactly what you want them to do. And, you know, because they are people pleasers, they're little kids, you know. So if you can create a good classroom management and, and plan and, and have a safe environment for the kids, you can be a teacher. You like, mm -hmm. you know, y you just have to know that you're not in it for the money, truly. Mm -hmm. You're in it to, to really impact lives. So no, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. I just oh, wanted to okay. ask one more question. <laughs> so for all, a lot of these like younger girls who are going into education and you know, you're not in it for the money. How do you encourage these girls to still have fun in their career when they're spending their entire day being disrespected by kids that are stepping all over them and not listening to them. And then they leave this classroom and I'm sitting here online being like, go have fun after work. And they're like, no, I'm tired. Yeah. So what is your, you are, t it is, it's, it's, it's mentally draining. It, like I said, I ride home at the end of the day with no sound at all, because that's my time to sort of decompress. And then once I get home, I know, you know, daddy's been home all day <laughs> and he wants to go out and do something. And that's really hard. There's just some days where I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit and watch TV mm -hmm. and put my feet up and relax. Um, so, you know, it's, not always like that though. Just, just remember that, that it's not always like that. I try to, well, I stay late at the end of the day. Oh my gosh. She will be the last person at the school leave, every mm -hmm. time. The janitors will be there <laughs> literally locking up and she will not leave. Well, that's not true anymore. I do leave. <laughs> you I do leave, to. but I, I can stay and I can, um, I can grade papers and get things done because I don't have kids at home. Mm -hmm. So I think probably my advice just based off experience is you have to put yourself first. Your lesson plans, the kids do not know if your lesson plans aren't perfect. The kids don't know that maybe you had to teach something different today because, or the kids don't know that you didn't come with lesson plans and you're winging it today because you did go out when you got home last night. So mm -hmm. you do have to remember that, 
it's a job, but your mental state and your um, family, whether it's, you know, kids, your husband, your boyfriend, that comes first. And so, and that took me a long time to realize. So I try not to bring a lot of work home anymore. I'll stay later just to get it done. Because a lot of times when I do bring it home, it just stays in the bag anyways. <laughs> and I'll do it the next day during my planning period or something. But um, but you do have to just remember that there is, you do have a life outside of your job. Mm-hmm. And as much as you want to be there for those kids and be an important role model for them, um, you have to take care of yourself first. So. And now you guys have a lot of fun. You and daddy, you guys are always doing something. We do. I feel like now that you've been teaching for a while you allow yourself a little bit more leniency to do things like your bowling league mm-hmm. and what else, what else do you guys do? You have your bowling league in the winter. Bowling league in the winter. And then in the spring, is it spring and summer? It's just boating season? It's boating. Well, my parents just got a golf cart. <laughs> They're obsessed with this golf cart. They drive it over to the lake and watch the sunset every night. Mm-hmm. Dad will go and rake the beach. We do our little home modeling projects still. We didn't really yeah. get around to do any, any of this winter but that's okay there's they'll be waiting for us still but yeah yeah but you've allowed yourself to have more fun now that you've been in it for a while I've chilled out a bit (laughs) I've tried to anyways I think once we moved and downsized and have just like a little bit more carefree like I don't have these things over the like weighing on me like oh my god like the the weeds and the bushes are out of control and I need to go do that and well that's all I think about that I love doing stuff like that but I don't have to worry about it anymore. Oh, so. well, don't you can help me. I will. <laughs> I was actually going to go out and pull some weeds in the front driveway this morning. But me and Connor <laughs> just pulled weeds like two weeks ago. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking like, oh, I kind of really like this. I, w- I just need to get one of those little knee stepper mm-hmm. things that you have. But it is really therapeutic to pull weeds. And I think the only reason why I like doing it is because you guys made us do it when we were younger so we redid the whole front yard and put mulch down and everything. It was like a whole day project. Connor planted new plants and it's it's basically a mess again. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this is so much work. It's a lot of upkeep. Obviously I can't complain. Having but a house, like, having a yard, it's, it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work. It is. Well, my mom and I are going to go spend some mommy daughter time. <laughs> Yay. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for coming on, mommy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>